Hello, hello, Tom McGuire. I just want to review the book The War on the West, How to Prevail in the Age of Unreason by Douglas Murray. Now, I read and reviewed The Madness of Crowds, I think it was a couple of years ago now. It was one of my earlier uh, reviews. Just did a quick one in the car and I don't think it was a particularly good review, but if you want to watch that, then, you know, be my guest. To be fair, I think it's got about 1,700 views, so it's probably one of the more watched ones that I've done. But um, I quite enjoyed The Madness of Crowds. I thought it was pretty good. There were a few things that great is on me a little bit about the audio version, if I remember rightly. But this one, uh, The War on the West, I think is absolutely fantastic. I think definitely I recommend you giving this one a go, giving it a listen. It's not, as you might expect, the same old kind of ranting about political correctness and blah, blah, blah. It's not a Piers Morgan type thing. It's actually really in interesting. Douglas Murray has clearly spent a long time thinking about this stuff and talking about this stuff and putting his arguments together and it is really really interesting. He comes up some, with some really really good points. I'm currently reading The Ascent of Man at the minute by Jacob Bronowski which I really like. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a brilliant book. I highly recommend that as well. And the reason I mentioned that alongside this one is because I've been watching some of his videos on YouTube, or not his vid YouTube videos, but old footage of him, basically. He was interviewed by Michael Parkinson at one point, which is really interesting. And The Ascent of Man was a TV series as well, which is worth watching. Um, I think it came out in the 70s. It looks a bit old, but it's still pretty good. And there's a three minute video of Bronowski talking about how he doesn't doubt the ascent of man continuing for however long. But what he does say is don't expect it necessarily to be the West. And he says, you know, that's fine. Humanity has its has the right to or has its right to um, change its skin colour. But he personally thinks it'd be a real shame. He was brought up in England and benefited from all the, you know, all the... Um, advantages of being born in the west and he just says you know imagine a world in which Shakespeare and Newton are kind of um, relegated to becoming historical fossils in the same way that Homer and Euclid are and that really kind of struck me and that that kind of goes along really with Douglas Murray's argument in this book he's kind of saying really that um, you know we're being attacked in the west a lot and we're actually guilty of attacking ourselves as well we're kind of slagging ourselves off for want of a better phrase in terms of our inability to understand racism and put ourselves in other people's situations um we are insistent on kind of bringing ourselves down and, and kind of destroying our own history and our culture tearing down statues you know spraying there was a racist on winston churchill's statue um Things such as musical notation now have been has been considered to be racist. M maths, gardening. He mentions at one point. I was actually on my hands and knees, hands and knees doing the weeding in the garden when I was listening to this. When he when he came up with that, kind of made me laugh a little bit. But um, how anything basically can be brought back to history and to patriarchal society and power and then therefore racism and blah 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 and you you know how it goes but the way he paints the picture and tells the story and uses you know factual information but puts in his own kind of opinion as well in quite a poetic sort of way is really nice to listen to I really enjoyed it it really gets you thinking he does some fantastic he gives some fantastic examples of of slavery and the kind of hypocrisy that goes on there and you know the fact that he, he talks about how Britain spent I, I may well get this wrong now, but I think he 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 said that they spent the was it the nineteenth century basically spending so much money to abolish it and to stop it. They spent so much in the nineteenth century that it kind of undid the amount of money they would have made in the eighteenth century from it. He then makes the point that the Saudis were involved in the in the slave trade as well. The difference was that they castrated all their slaves, so that's why there aren't any descendants of slaves in Saudi Arabia, whereas we have lots here because we didn't do that. Um, and he never at any point kind of says that slavery is OK. He, obviously, he just kind of makes the point that at some point you kind of have to accept that things happened in the past with people who weren't weren't even necessarily our grandparents, but great, great, great grandparents and ancestors and people who we have no right really to be apologising on behalf of as well. Um, he makes that point and, and all this kind of apologising and getting down on one knee and feeling guilty and all this sort of stuff and how... 
yes, of course, we should be self-reflecting and of course we should learn from history and never allow these things to happen again. But we're at real risk of kind of damaging our own sense of self and where, where we've come from. And actually, we should have some pride in, in where we've come from to a certain extent as well. All humanity is guilty of making some some hideous mistakes. And, and we know that and actually a lot of those things still go on in other in other parts of the world that aren't the West, basically. He says that there are, there are still apparently about 40 million people in slavery now, which is more far more than back then. And, and instead of wasting our energy on kind of cancel culture and all this sort of stuff and tearing down statues, actually we should spend a bit more time and money on trying to solve that problem that we have here now. Um, he makes the point at the end that, you know, migrants are, are getting on ships and crossing oceans to come to Britain, Australia, America, you know, those sorts of countries. They're not trying to go to China. They're not trying to go to India. Uh, and then there's a reason for that. We do have a fantastic culture that we should be proud of. And he talks about gratitude. He talk, he uses Nietzsche and some of the examples Nietzsche gave on, on resentment and the danger of resentment. Um, and it's just really, really good. It really, it really got me thinking. It wasn't necessarily anything massively new that I hadn't sort of thought about before, but the way he kind of tells it does give you a little bit of a combination of kind of anger towards how wrong these things are and, and kind of also a bit of a kick up the backside in terms of forming your own argument when you get when you when you inevitably come across the sort of people who will be preaching this stuff to you you should be feeling guilty for this and that and you shouldn't say this and you shouldn't say that actually it's down to us individually to take responsibility to learn these sorts of things and, and learn the facts and form our own opinions and it's actually okay to have an opinion even you know there might be some people watching this who completely disagree with me that's okay I, I don't have a problem with that you, you know feel free to comment below or, or not or don't watch or unsubscribe or whatever else you know we should all be free to have our opinions and to voice our opinions if you're going out and you're deliberately trying to sort of spread hate and and and, and all of that then of course, that's not OK, but people need to put a voice their opinions. We should be able to have some debate and, and risk offending people occasionally, um, as we know. But yeah, it, it's just fantastic. I, I really enjoyed it as an, as an audio book, particularly. Uh, I do recommend this one as a, as a listen, as, a, as an, audio, as an audio, audio book. It's really good. Thank you very much. Please keep liking and subscribing. I really recommend this book. I, I, and if you don't have time to read the book, listen to some of Douglas Murray's stuff on, on YouTube. He's interviewed by Jordan Peterson recently as well, which is really interesting. But no, it's a really good book. Cheers.